good morning. This is uh, Pragmatic Lee again and the uh, in the Ten Barn. Welcome back. Uh, Saturday morning. It has really cooled off here in eastern North Carolina this week. Uh, cooled off to the point that uh, I had to have the heating units back on again for a while. Uh, it's supposed to get up to the 70s today, so maybe I can open the door to the shop a little later. But uh, right now it's a little bit chilly in here, but... Uh, not too chilly, but I think we can get another project done today. What I want to do this morning uh, is create a lathe, lathe chuck spider. Uh, some of the other YouTube channels, uh, Chris and the Old Man Shop posted a video this week of one that he built that was uh, a little different than this. Uh, he had a solid rod in the middle and then three legs coming off of it. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is going to be somewhat uh, reverse of that. Uh, I'll be using this uh, piece of aluminum 6061 stock. Uh, it's a little, about uh, 0.525 thick, uh, uh, just a piece of stock that I had. But what I'll be doing is cutting out these veins here that will slide over the chuck uh, on the lathe. And of course this will be used to prevent material from falling down into the chuck. Uh, my, my lathe has a large bore, it has an inch and a half bore, uh, exactly just a little over that. So trying to hold small stuff, short small stuff in there, uh, it's kind of uh, difficult to get in. This will give it a backing plate uh, for it to go back against. Now this would be a very simple task with a rotary table. Uh, I've got a rotary table, but it's only a little four inch table and it won't hold this uh, too well at all. I tried to put it on there uh, and clamp it around uh, with a stud through the center, but it just wouldn't hold it. Uh, it's uh, just not been meant for something this large, but on a uh, larger uh, rotary table, it just simply be a matter of, of milling out your four veins. What I'm going to do with this uh, is use a, a bolt hole pattern calculator. Uh, this happens to be one that I wrote myself. There are numerous ones of them on the uh, internet, uh, free ones, uh, uh, ones that you can download for your uh, uh, portable devices, smart devices, or for your uh, desktop, laptop computers. This is one I wrote just because I wanted to write one. But what I'm going to do, and what I've laid out here, it's kind of hard to see, but there are some little dots here. Uh, of course, I laid out my circle, my inside bore. These little dots are 120 degrees apart to make the circle. And there was actually a small little dot on the inside here uh, that I've actually colored in, drawn in. <clears throat> what I'll be doing is setting this up on the, la uh, on the mill table and milling out one section using these marks as an index mark which I'm going to lay those out to begin with I'll then turn it on the table clamp it back down again uh, it's going to have to be very particular to do this uh, to keep everything in line uh, I'll be milling out three quarters of an inch of uh, 0.750 the jaws on the lathe I think are like 0.7 Mm, they're just just shy of three quarter. I don't remember exactly what they are right now. I don't want a lot of play in them though, but a three quarter inch mill will give a good slot in that. Uh, here's a just a little sample of what I'll be doing, uh, and then I'm gonna while it, while I'm laying out these holes, I'm gonna also drill three holes. A third pattern I've got laid out over here. Uh, drill uh, for quarter 20 bolts through those. What they'll be used for, and this will probably make a little more sense uh, after you see the final product, but this will go back against the, the body of the chuck. However, if I want to set it out just a little ways, these three holes here will allow me to put a little spacer block, maybe something a quarter inch, half inch, whatever is necessary to bring the stock back out to the edge if I want to face something that has a small, diam small diameter 
and is also very short. This will help me hold it in there. So I'm going to get set it up, uh, get set up on the mill, get the camera set up over there, and show you how I set this up to lay out the hole patterns or lay out the uh, the, the coordinates from the bolt hole pattern program uh, that we'll only be using as reference marks through that. So I'll see you over at the mill. Okay, I have the workpiece mounted on the uh, mill table now. I've got a couple pieces of sacrificial material up underneath it so I don't get onto my uh, mill bed. <clears throat> what I've done now, I've just got a simple pointer in the, uh, in the chuck and have just getting it close to center now. I'm uh, going to put the coaxial indicator in. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, and indicate on this outside diameter uh, to get, and that will be our zero starting point uh, for the remainder of the project. What you're hearing now is my actual uh, auto. Uh, Z left on this mill that I added uh, right after I got it just to keep from having to use the hand crank. It's not fast, but it's much easier on my old shoulders. Alright, I have the indicator loaded in the chuck now. We'll set that on there. Lock the quill down. There'll probably be a little noise on the outside of this. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Let me slow my mill down. Okay. Get the handheld just a second to show you on the indicator. Just a little outside noise. We're within a half a thousandth, which I think will be perfectly fine for this operation. Now I'm going to install a uh, just a center drill, and we're going to lay out the uh, the coordinates for our three channels we're going to be cutting in here. Uh, have to bring the mill tail or bring the uh, head back down. Before I start cutting in here, of course, I want to set my uh, set my DRO, set the zeros on that for the X, Y axis. Uh, uh, we went to all the trouble finding that center. We want to be sure we keep it. I'm also going to put some uh, some work stops on the mill table. And this is what's going to help us when we get ready to rotate this. These work stops will remain in place. 
uh, and we'll butt our material up to it each time and reference our uh, index mark that we put in each of the places as we rotate this on the table. Let me get these up and get them good and snug. Want to be sure these uh, these work stops are sitting flat on the table and that they're up against the work. Again, these will not move during this entire process. We will uh, loosen this center bolt to rotate this. So our first coordinate says Y remains zero, but move X to 2.875. So I'm going to lock the Y down and move to 2.875. All right, there's our X coordinate. And I'm going to put the, a pretty good mark out here. Uh, I, th I think a lot of this may make more sense as we get to it, uh, I've never done this particular setup before, but uh, uh, I've planned it in my head numerous times, so we're going to see how this works. Uh, let's get her back up, speed up a little bit. Now our second index says X goes to 1.437 and Y is going to go to 2.875. Four three seven. Knew I had to get to the other side of the workpiece here. Okay. And Y goes to two point four nine zero. And of course, we want to double check those. Negative 1.437, 2.490. I'll show you on the DRO what I'm actually doing here. Top one, negative 1.437, which is the X, and the Y at 2.490. And again, these coordinates were, were calculated through the uh, uh, bolt hole pattern program. And the third coordinate, the X stays at the same position, but we, uh, instead of plus 2.490, we move to negative 2.490. Now, if you recall, I said on our drawing that there is a, uh, a mark indicating here. This is just going to be a small indication mark as to where I need to stop my mill when I come in each time. So we'll lay those out now. These will be much close to center. Y 
is at zero. And X at point 0.5. just a small mark at that because we're going to actually take that out when we uh, uh, when we start cutting our three channels through there second one is y at 0.433 and x at Negative two five zero point two five zero, of course. And then the third one. I'm going to switch over, put the uh, collet and the mill in, and get the height set, and also get a little bit more clamping on this. I do not want this to go anywhere. So I'll be right back when I get that set up. All right, one more thing I wanted to do before, uh, uh, before I put the other clamps down and get the mill in. Remember those three holes I was talking about I wanted to, to drill in the middle in between our, our three channels, three veins. So I've got the uh, coordinate set up on the first one now. And that's kind of a blind drilling right there, so I'm gonna set my DRO. Like I say, I've got a sacrificial piece under there just want to make sure I don't get into the mill table. Alright, that should be through. And I want to counterboard these because I'll be using a uh, socket head cap screw in those in the event that I need them. Make sure I get that deep enough. I'm going to go ahead and drill the other two of these and again, like I say, get it set up uh, for the, get some more clamps on and get the uh, end mills mounted in there. Alright, what we have now is a quick recap. We've laid out coordinates for the three uh, 120 degrees apart using the bolt hole pattern program on the outside parameter. We've also put a series of, of three markers, uh, witness marks, on the inside, and we drilled three holes in the center of our first 120-degree uh, layout, uh, two under here. I've now got some uh, toe clamps on here. I have a 3 8 end mill, 3 8 roughing end mill in there now, and what I'm going to do is probably make this in two passes. Uh, it might would do it in in one but I know it's going to clog up with this aluminum I have some WD-40 I'll be uh, putting on it but uh, uh, if you're an old man you forget things and I don't have a lot of WD-40 left so I'll be kind of using it sparingly just to keep that from clogging up but we're going to see how this goes now
All right, that did just fine. What I'm doing, again, I'm bringing the, the mill up to these little uh, witness marks we placed on the inside. For this run, I'm just touching them now, and I think I'm going to pause the camera for just a second and get my air hose over here, uh, just so I can keep an eye on those marks. All right, we'll go down and get the remainder of this. It might do it all in one cut, but I had just rather, again, I don't want to clog up the end mill and take a chance of pushing something out of position. Step over 0 0.160, a little less than uh, half the witness, the thickness of the cutter. All right. Now, there's somewhere for the chips to go. I don't think it'll clog near as much. stopping well short of my mark now because again this is going to have a radius in there when we finish this. Now move 160 to the other side of Y, other side of zero. And I'm going to switch out the collet and end mill and put in a three quarter and that's going to clean our vein out both sides and bring it right up to those witness to that witness mark that we made in the inner ring. Okay, I'm going to go handheld just a second and bring the camera around here so you, you can see what we've got. With the rough and end mill, we made a center pass. We moved over and got this side, we moved over and got that side. And you notice I left short on that. Now we're going to take this three quarter and bump right up to the inside of our internal witness mark. Now we're ready to see if everything is secured good enough to hold this three quarter inch end mill. <coughs> doing now is cleaning up the sizes, the sides, and bringing it to our final dimension.
Okay. That worked as good as I had had hoped it would. Probably should have had it set just a little lower. As a matter of fact, let me do that. It left a pretty nasty burr on the bottom. Let me go down just a little more and run that. <laughs> Now we're going to see just how well all that coordinate marking and layout and planting this in my head is going to go. So we're going to rotate the piece, attempt to rotate it 120 degrees and keep everything on the center. Now what we're going to use here is nothing more than a little pointer uh, cut down to 3-8 shaft so it'd fit in this collet. And we're going to use that to hopefully locate when we get get this twisted around, locate that hole that we put on the outer parameter, the second one. Remember our work stops are over here. They're not going to move. This center is going to move a little bit just simply because it's on a T-nut in the middle there. So if we rotate and don't have to get our sacrificial pieces. Should be close. Clean out some chips from under there. We want all three of our points touching here. These two stops and this center point. little burr right there that's stopping that from going. There we go. Alright, I've got something that's in the way right there. Alright, there we're in, in place now. Alright, we're up tight against our work stops and we're in line there. So I'm going to put the, uh, the clamps back on and run our second vein. Alright, we're clamped back down both sides, tight in the middle, got our roughing mitt end mill back in there. We're going to repeat the process on this, uh, on this channel.
Okay, that looked pretty good. Come out on our mark, or at least appear to be. Now I'm going to repeat the same process again and uh, remove the clamps, rotate everything, get it in place, and tighten her back down again. All right, all three of them are cut. Take it out, deburr it, and see if all again, see if all this planting actually worked out. Test it out on the on the lathe. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave these work stops in place and leave my T-nut under there just in case I have to come back and widen these out any. I don't anticipate it, but if you notice in the, uh, when I was cutting that second vein through there, I come up to the, to the top on my center cut, but instead of going back out to the outside, moving over and cutting in, moving over and cutting back out, I wound up cutting up the middle, moved over, went out, back in and I wound up climb milling on those two sides and it slipped about three thousandths on me uh, three or four thousandths I believe it was that shouldn't matter I've got some clearance in there so I don't think it'll matter uh, but we're going to test it out here on the lathe in just a second as soon as I deburr it and get the sleeve out of the middle uh, I do have a half inch hole in the middle so that when I put something up, this the particular project I'm making this for, uh, I'll be drilling 5 16 holes through the center of the pieces. Uh, but as you can see, hopefully the three jaws are going to fit in there. Uh, I'll deburr this and see you over at the lathe. Okay, we're over on the lathe now. I've got the uh, camera set up right in the middle of the bed. And as you can see on this lathe, uh, this is the... Uh, Precision Matthews, uh, PM 1127, with the uh, variable frequency, but uh, is the large bore version. And as you can see, it uh, is relatively large bore, 
uh, for this size lathe, 11 inch lathe. The task that I made the, uh, the spider specifically for is I, I need to drill a bunch of these out. I need to drill the center of them. Now, in a previous video uh, last week, as a matter of fact, I had a jig set up on the mill where I was uh, drilling these out. And that worked fine. However, there's oftentimes opportunity or needs to keep something from falling back through. So, here's what we just put together this morning. D-bird. Slides right over the jaws. The jaw can go down to, I think it probably hold a one inch piece. But as you can see with these pieces right here, Now it'd be simply a matter of drilling through that, removing that one very quickly, put another one in, hold everything tight, and ready to go again. The holes that I drilled in between are, I looked in my bin for some uh, uh, quarter inch uh, cap head screws, socket head cap screws, and didn't have any. But that's what these are drilled for. And should I have a situation where I've got something small uh, that I want to hold right out to the edge, small uh, lengthwise, and face it, again, I can make a little shim back through here, screw that in there, or I can simply, uh, it doesn't have to be screwed in, just take any piece as long as there's three of the same thickness. And that will hold that in. But I think it turned out rather well. Hopefully one day, if I keep messing out here in the shop with my mill and my lathe, I will learn to uh, not run my finger uh, over edges until, I, uh, until I've got it deburred. I've got a nice little piece of swarf up under the skin there. And uh, I take several blood thinners. So... I bleed pretty easily when uh, when I do something like that, but I've got the, some redneck tape on it with a, uh, a painter's tape on with a piece of paper towel underneath and plenty, plenty of cutting oil under there, so it should be okay. It's uh, I got started on this project around, I guess, around 8 o'clock this morning. It's about 10.20 now and got the project finished. Uh, I think I'll spend the rest of the day in the shop just making little convenience items. Uh, something to hang my lathe uh, cutting tools in. Again, just a day of uh, doing convenience items. Hope you enjoyed this little video and I'll see you next time around.